A public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in the court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network. A network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. Now from the files of the public defender, we bring you the story we call Badge of Honor. Tonight, I'm going to tell you of a case, the final chapter of which was written only this morning, when Traffic Sergeant Dan Conway was laid to rest, meeting his death far and beyond the line of duty. Fellow officers and friends were gathered at the grave to pay this brave young officer a final and deserving tribute. There was an honor guard from the Legion police post, Doris Conway, bearing up bravely in the true tradition of a police officer's wife. Dan's good friend, Detective Lieutenant Walsh, and even Captain of Police Gunderson himself. Well, no longer did Gunderson need to have any qualms about Dan. To Sergeant Daniel Conway, his badge was more than just a shining piece of metal. It was a badge of honor. He cherished it and wore it well. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. The path of righteousness. Dan had found it. And I had been right about him all along. My faith in the boy hadn't been misplaced. The end of World War II had found Private First Class Dan Conway convalescing in a Normandy base hospital. And as he lay there, recovering from the tortures and undernourishment of a Nazi prison camp, he was thinking ahead. What he'd do when he got back home? And he knew he had a sympathetic confidant in the person of Miss Norton a kindly and understanding Red Cross nurse. How's our policeman today? Doc says a month more should get me out of here. Well, that should make you happy. Have you written your wife the good news? Well, I started a letter, but began to feel a little bit groggy. Well, let me finish it for you. Just tell me what to say. Well, first I want to thank Doris for those books she sent me to help me pass my civil service exam. And after we thank Mrs. Conway for the books, anything more? Yeah. Tell her to be a sweetheart and go down to the police department and pick up an application for me so I can fill it out first thing I get home. First thing, Dan? Well, almost. After I untangle myself in that great big hug and a kiss. <laughs> oh, I've been promising myself this for a long time. Me too. Say, honey? Yes, dear? Where's that application blank? Now, Dan. Well, I don't want to lose any time. You've got plenty of time. I just found out last week that there won't be another examination until June 1st. Six months? I'll be the first cop with a long gray beard. <laughs> It'll tickle, but I'll still love you. Oh, Dan, Mr. Johnson phoned, wanted to know when you'd be out. You can have your old route back. Okay, but just until June the 1st. Say, is this your regular route? Yes, sir. I just moved into apartment four. How about dropping off a couple of quarts every morning? Well, I'll be glad to, sir. Your name? Lieutenant Walsh. Army? Uh-uh. Police. Oh. Say, that's my racket. I mean, it's going to be. In June, I'm taking exams. Are they tough? They're not easy. I guess they have to be. Otherwise, any guy could be a cop. Uh, I mean a policeman. You look like you might make it. Thanks. But, uh, I could use a few pointers, Lieutenant. Anytime, son, if I can help. You sure can. How about your weight? Seems to me you could use a few more pounds. Guess I could. But where I was boarding, the Nazis didn't exactly feed you meat and potatoes every day. You better work on that, or else when you go for your examinations, you won't get any further than the scales. <laughs> Dan took the advice to heart. If he had to eat his way into the force, Doris was just the girl who could help him make the grade. 
And Lieutenant Walsh, who had taken a sincere liking to Dan, was making it his personal job to see that Dan was properly prepared for the civil service examination. It was a tough one, and Dan, sweating it out, nervous and tense, wasn't sure he could pass. When the good news came, it was cause for a celebration dinner. When I got that postcard notifying me I'd passed, I started to breathe all over again. 80%. That's not too bad, huh? Don't you think Lieutenant Walsh deserves a little credit? Uh, forget it. This is Dan's night to howl. When you come back to Earth, Dan, you're going to find out that being a police officer means a lot more than just carrying a billy club. A lot of responsibility goes with the job. Maybe you ought to stick to your milk route, dear. Not me. Tomorrow morning, I'm giving the firm my notice. It's time enough for that, Dan. You're not a policeman yet. Oh, but I'm over the biggest hurdle. Rest should be a breeze. Well, there's still the oral exam. Get a line on your character and temperament. A psychiatric test. That's to find out if I'm all there. Sometimes I wonder. Hey. One more crack like that from you, Liddy. I'll have to lock you up. Dan, you got some rugged weeks ahead of you. Granted, you get by the exam. You still got 90 days of the toughest grind you've ever been through before you even start your probationary period. Oh, you haven't any cranberries, Lieutenant. Oh, thank you. Lieutenant Walsh was right, as Dan found out. There were track workouts until Dan wondered how much longer he could stand on his feet. Hours of grueling exercises in conditioning. Day after day at the rifle range, to become expert in the use of firearms. And at last, a final dress parade in which Dan marched with a sense of real accomplishment. An important day to him, he had earned the right to wear the coveted uniform. You've worked hard for that badge, Conway. Now wear it with honor. Yes, sir. As division commander, I'll be keeping tab on you. And I'm a pretty tough officer. I've handled enough rookies to know all the answers, so watch yourself if you want me to turn in a good report. Yes, sir. You're being assigned to traffic, and your future on the force depends entirely on yourself. As you know, probation is six months. In that time, you'll rise or fall on your record. Just don't try to be too much of an eager beaver, like one of my rookies who gave out 35 tickets in one day. Badge-happy rookies don't last long. I understand, sir. On the other hand, there's no room for good Joes on the force, either. There's a happy medium between overzealousness and gold-breaking. And I hope you have common sense enough to recognize it. Good luck. How'd it work, huh? Today's report. How are you making out? Two tickets. That's my whole day's work. I never saw so many well-behaved citizens. Don't try to force it, kid. You'll get your chance. against the wall. Go on. You ain't gonna find nothing. Told you I ain't got no wallet. Is this what you're looking for, officer? Yeah, where'd you find it, son? The guy tried to ditch it while you was chasing him. Okay, fella. Looks like we got a little date downtown. Well. Oh, oh I'm so glad you caught him, officer. This your wallet? Yes, officer. What's your name, ma'am? Mrs. Mabel Wilson. You'll find it in the car right inside. What's your address, Ms. Wilson? 964 Archer Place. May I have my wallet now, please? Thank you, officer. Oh, 
I wanted you to look over my report before Captain Gunnarsson sees it. This is the first big fish I've caught. <laughs> Want to make sure everything's right. The kid who saw him ditch the wallet you should have included his name. Yes, I know. I, uh, I didn't get it. This boy's your key witness, Dan. You know you've got to get the names of everybody. Well, guess there's no excuse. I goofed it. Everything happened so fast. Before I knew it, the kid was away with his bike. And Too he... bad. Captain Gunderson doesn't miss a point. He's sure to call you on this. But look, Lieutenant, I've only got two hands. I had to make sure the suspect didn't get away. And then there was this lady asking for a wallet. Look, and she Dan, wa I'm talking to you as a friend. There's no sense kidding you. Gunderson's going to hop all over you. But the guy is guilty. I know he snatched it. It's up to a jury to decide whether he's guilty or not. You're just the arresting officer making a report. This report can wash me up, can it? Well, you've got a couple of months. I thought you said you wouldn't kid me. You know, it's too bad you didn't find the wallet on the guy. Something worrying you, dear? No. No, why? You look as if you had the whole weight of the world on your shoulders. Just tired, I guess. And this was the night you were going to help me reline that kitchen cabinet. Some other time, hmm? Welcher. That's probably Lieutenant Walsh, and I'll bet you're not too tired for a gin game. Hi, Doris. Thought I'd just drop over and give Dan a chance to get some of his money back. Good. Maybe you can pull him out of the doldrums. Still thinking about that report, kid? Worry won't help. What report, Dan? Oh, it was just a pinch I made yesterday. I... I guess I forgot to tell you about it. Now, don't tell me you actually made a real arrest and kept it a secret. Just a petty theft. Nothing... nothing world-shattering. But, Dan, I should think you'd be terribly excited. It'll help your record, and isn't that what you wanted? Who can that be? I'd like to speak to Officer Conway. Oh, I'm Officer Conway. I'm Bart Matthews, Public Defender's Office. This is Mrs. Conway. Hello. Mrs. Conway? And, uh, Lieutenant Walsh. Lieutenant, I've seen you around headquarters. Oh, if this is police business of some sort, I think I should leave you men alone. I'll only be a few minutes, Mrs. Conway. It's about this fellow Brown, man you arrested yesterday. Our office is defending him, and we'd be remiss in our duties if we didn't run down every lead. Well, certainly, sir. Well, won't you sit down? Thanks. You know, I have to check with you, Conway. It's part of my job. It seems that there's some question about your report. You mean there's something in my report that, that wasn't clear? Just a point I'd like to clean up. Now, you say you found the wallet on Brown when you frisked him. Brown says that isn't so. You got the wallet from a boy who passed by on a bicycle. Was there a boy, or did Brown make this story up out of whole cloth? It's all in my report, Mr. Matthews. Just as it happened. There wasn't any kid. And that's the way you'll testify at the hearing? Yes, sir. Well, you can't blame a guy for trying. That's right, you can't blame a guy for trying. That not only applies to petty thieves, right, Dan? Well, I'm sorry I had to bother you, Conway. Guess the best advice I can give to Brown is that he enter a plea of guilty and pray he gets a lenient judge. You know, it's funny, the sort of lies a guy will latch onto to save his skin. Yeah, it is. Well, that's that. Well, thanks for your time, Conway. Good night. I know what you're thinking, Lieutenant. Why don't you say it? I think I'm a heel. That I don't deserve this badge. But I had a responsibility. Here was a guy that had stolen a wallet. And he might get off scot-free because of a little mistake of mine. It wasn't because you weren't thinking of yourself? Well, maybe that had something to do with it. But you told me yourself I was on a spot. What else was I going to do? Have Gunnarsson lay it on? Maybe can me? Do you want me to throw away a whole future all because of a little, little technicality? I wouldn't want your future now, son. 
Not while you've got to live with that little technicality and your conscience. Where's everybody? Oh, I, I told Walsh I didn't feel like a game tonight. He left with Matthews. What did Mr. Matthews want? Nothing important. Just about that arrest I made yesterday. His office is defending the fellow. They always question the arresting officer. Just, just routine stuff. You look beat, Dan. I just got a little headache, that's all. Sure? Yeah, sure. Then why not turn in? Make it an early night. What is it, dear? What's wrong? I'm... I'm not sure you'll understand, Doris. Haven't I always? Do you think you'd understand if I told you that... that I'm a fraud? That I don't deserve a badge? I don't believe it, Dan. You don't know what you're saying. Look, Doris, I've always given it to you straight, but, but this is going to be hard to take. When I made that arrest yesterday, I, I falsified a report. I falsified it deliberately. But why, dear? What's the difference why I did it? I was so hot on becoming a cop, I threw away the book of rules and made my own. Maybe I tried to kid myself. It didn't matter, because the guy was guilty anyway. But the real reason was, I was scared stiff of Gunnerson. Anyway, it's done. Oh, Dan. I wish I could tell you what to do. I know what to do, honey. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to see the public defender. I'm going to change my story. What you've just told me, Conway, could finish your career. I realize that, sir. When do you plan to see Captain Gunderson? Right after I leave here, Mr. Matthews. Now, wait a minute. Let's think about this. Now, that doesn't mean I'm condoning this false report. Oh, I know that, sir. <laughs> Since advice here is free, and I give it out all day long, do you mind if I give you some? I certainly could use it, Mr. Matthews. Well, I'd suggest you don't do anything. Just go about your work. Brown's preliminary hearing doesn't come up for a couple of days, so let me think it over, huh? Dan had told me of his friendship with Lieutenant Walsh. Fortunately, I ran across Walsh at the police academy while I was waiting for Captain Gunderson to join me for lunch. What first attracted me to Dan was his sincere desire to become a good officer. I couldn't believe he'd foul up a report. When I found out about it, it threw me. But after what you told me, how Dan came to you, I guess I wasn't wrong about the kid. Then there are two of us who think that Dan is worth going to bat for. Captain Gunderson, Bart. Maybe it's best if I speak to him alone. Much. Well, John, right on time. Well, it's a free lunch. I'm always prompt. What's on your mind, Bart? Well, do I have to have something on my mind to ask you to lunch? To give you a short answer, yes. Well, all right. It's a hypothetical case. I'm curious to know how you'd handle it if it were up to you. Let's have it. Well... Suppose that one of your probationers, in his anxiety to make good in your eyes, overstepped himself. How? I'll get to that, but let's say that getting on the force as a regular is almost an obsession with this fellow. Now, he's worried that he hasn't made much of a record so far. Then he makes a pinch. What kind of a pinch? Well, maybe he catches a man who snatches a purse. A witness sees the man drop the purse identifies the suspect, turns the purse over to the officer who gets a little flustered. Now remember, it's his first arrest. He forgets to take the witness's name. I'd put him on the carpet. Oh, but there's more, John. He's sure the man is the thief, but he knows what to expect if he admits the error in his report. So he falsifies it, says that he found the purse on the man when he frisked him. And you want to know what kind of action I'd take? I'd kick your hypothetical officer right off the force. Come on, let's eat. Hi, Bart. 
Kojun. I asked you to come over today because I've got a hypothetical case for you. Oh, yeah? Sit down. Suppose in my spot, you get a memo from the DA that a case has been dropped in which one of your probationers have made the arrest. Let's say a pickpocket suspect is being sent back to Omaha for jumping parole. Do you follow me? Sure. So you give a final check to the officer's report. Your probationer's first pinch. Now, certain facts ring a bell. Makes you think of a luncheon conversation you had. In other words, putting two and two together, you're sure the report was falsified. What would you do? Well, I'm sure I'd look into the circumstances first. Ah, let's stop shadow boxing, Bart. We're both talking about Dan Conway. Evidently, he falsified his report. And if so, he ought to be washed out. I suppose so, John, if you just want to go by the rules. But if you knew the facts... The facts are he's been derelict in his duties. Why are you so interested in him anyway? If Dan has made a mistake, no one knows it better than he does. Oh, I agree with you. If a wrong has been committed, it should be punished. But he's had his punishment. A punishment much bigger than you could ever mete out. A tortured conscience. So tortured that he came to see me on his own. And he would have gone to see you if I hadn't stopped him. Voluntarily, he admitted to me that he falsified his report. Even though he knew that no one would ever discover his lie if he chose to live with it. Now, it took a brave man to do that, John. A big man. It showed character and respect for the uniform. Keep him on the force and I'll underwrite him. We need men like that. All right, Bart. I'm sold. Thanks, John. You won't regret it. Now get out of here, will you, before you talk me into promoting the guy to a sergeant. <laughs> but seriously, Bart, we can't overlook this thing entirely. Suppose I recommend 30 days suspension. Don't you think five days would serve the same purpose? <laughs> Now I know why you're such a good public defender. Thanks, John. When Dan finally became a member of the force, there was a celebration. You cut the cake, Dan. You know, this is one day I'll never forget. And I've got you to thank for it, Mr. Matthews. I suppose some people might think, why all the celebration? Just another cop. But you're a very special one to me, Dan. And Dan Conway became a very special one to all of us, with a very special place in our hearts. As we laid him to rest, we all remembered how he had worn his badge with honor for seven years. Then, two days ago, as he was driving home, he noticed a car wildly careening down the highway. In a matter of seconds, it would collide head-on with a school bus. Deliberately sideswiping it on his motorcycle, Dan Conway saved the lives of a dozen school children and gave his own. Ready. Aim. Fire. Down. It's good to remember this story of Dan Conway. For too often we take for granted the courageous deeds of our police. The case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender.